Hello there, my name is Dr. Pierce, and welcome to what I like to call Blackout Academy, because when shit goes dark, you're going to want to remember what I taught you. Anyway, today is our first lesson. Take your seat and listen up, because if you leave and you haven't listened and you die, well, that's not really my problem now, is it? Alright, today we'll be covering our first SCP, and luckily for you chumps, it is going to be a very easy one, because we won't have to deal with this one ever, because it's gone. Welcome to SCP-6373. Containment class, neutralized. Nickname, the Stage Blight. Special containment procedures. The building containing SCP-6373 has been outfitted with a closed-circuit surveillance system and shuttered from public access. Assigned personnel are to view and transcribe SCP-6373's daily performances. Counseling is available as part of post-view and debriefing. Personnel are expected to be repulsed. Description. SCP-6373 is a collection of four paper mache puppets, each one meter in height. Chemical analysis indicates each puppet's exterior is constructed from non-anomalous <clears throat> non material. All attempts to observe the interior of SCP-6373 through either physical or endoscopic means have failed. All instances are attached to an individual set of strings bound together by a plastic cross-shaped mechanism intended for control by a puppeteer. SCP-6373 ad admits a strong odor, causing visceral nausea. This response is entirely non-anomalous. At 1800 hours daily, SCP-6373 will gain anomalous properties, primarily lifting, limited sentience, mobility, and intelligence. Attempts to interact with the objects outside of 6373 events have failed. This effect will not occur if SCP-6373 are contained in a location other than the Gofford Theater, located in Reading, Pennsylvania. Instead, they will remain inert objects. SCP-6373 will then begin a rapid deterioration process, involving slowly melting their paper mache bodies and emitting a stronger, more intensive odor as a result. This process continues until SCP-6373 are placed within a 12-meter vicinity of the Gofford Theater. For the love of God, keep them in there. <clears throat> when conditions for animation are sufficient, SCP-6373 proceeds to the main stage of the theater to perform an act, classified as an SCP-6373 event. The details of this performance are fluid and ever-changing. Presently, no repeat performances have been observed. An audience of at least one individual must be present at the theater to observe the performance. Otherwise, SCP-6373 will undergo decomposition. Luckily for you, yours truly here has never had the pleasure of viewing one of these shows. And I don't plan to. Ever. Alright. SCP-6373, Event Summary, and Cast. We will go over each performance performed by the theater. <clears throat> Overview. An SCP-6373 event is largely unorganized and spontaneous performance, acted out by SCP-6373, featuring unorthodox attempts at humor, storytelling, and entertainment. Audience attempts to interact with SCP-6373 during the performance have resulted in injury. Performances do not have a set length, ranging from two minutes to three weeks in length. Descriptions of each puppet's physical appearance and typical role is an SCP-6373 event can be found below. SCP-6373-1 is an elderly male with a pointed nose and large eyes, clad in a beret, black sweater, and a striped shirt. Dash-1 is referred to as Pierre and serves as the performance's host and central character. SCP-6373-2 is a large, bald, disembodied head with sizable ears and an open mouth expression. SCP-6373-2 is referred to as Gloaton. This is and is incapable of speaking outside a deep, guttural moaning in a single word statement. SCP-6373-3 is, <clears throat> is a diminutive, disembodied head with closed, sunken eyes a solemn expression. It is notably smaller than the others, and its skin is painted a discolored gray. While the puppet features no limbs, much like Glouton, audiences have observed its strings being pulled during performances as an artificial joint for presence. 
SCP-6373-3 is referred to as Ame. Though Ame does not typically speak or make noise, it will on occasion silently cry. Ame is the most frequent target of Pierre's verbal and physical abuse. SCP-6373-4 is a long-necked clown wearing an outfit typical of such with white gloves. SCP-6373-4 is the only puppet with a hinged jaw, intended to be operated through the use of a string connected to the bottom of the mouth. This mechanism has since broken, and they're rendering SCP-6373-4's jaw loose and uncontrollable. SCP-6373-4 is referred to as Jacques, and serves as the group's comedic relief. Jacques often reiterates the phrase, Isn't that funny? to punctuate its antics. Frankly, I haven't found a single one of the damn things the thing has said ever funny, but might as well just stick around for it. Addendum 6373-1 History and Formant Summaries The Gotford Theater was opened in Reading, Pennsylvania in 1860 by French immigrant and entrepreneur Timothy Gofford. The theater was host to stage plays, musical performances, and in-house puppet shows that featured SCP-6373. The puppets were personally des designed by Gofford, who maintained an intensive interest in puppeteering and often participated in the show's production. These shows were massively profitable and popular among Reading's children. It is unknown if SCP-6373 held any anomalous significance during the theater's operation, but written evidence details payrolls of puppeteers and printed copies of scripts intended to be performed by SCP-6373 suggest they were ordinary puppets. In 1884, the theater closed due to embezzlement committed by Gofford's wife, Cynthia Cordier. Cordier's actions were presumably in retaliation to Gofford's unfaithfulness in their marriage. This resulted in a divorce and subsequent legal battle, which Gofford lost. In 1886, Gofford wrote a letter to his wife, a portion of which has been transcribed. <clears throat> I'll read it to you now. I write to you in poor health, and all joy sapped of my life. May misfortune follow you till the end of your days. I will not construct again that which I have spent two decades of my life working towards. I can only thank God's grace that the building has remained vacant as I could not bear to see it owned by another man. I want to perform again. I want to see the children smile. My happiness was so linked to theirs. One week later, Gofford disappeared. No evidence of his whereabouts was found. The letter remains his last known communication with another individual. Record... Hmm. Records indicate Cynthia Cordier would die of natural causes four months later, in 1887. The ASCI, American Secure Containment Initiative, discovered SCP-6373 during an inspection of the building. Anomalous effects were documented thereafter. The containment continued after, S after ASCI had been assimilated to the SCP Foundation. A log of notable SCP-6373 performances has been recorded below. Performance Summary, 1887-10-22 First recorded performance, lighting fixtures around the theater collectively power on several minutes before the show, and a slight piano accompaniment, originated from an unknown source, is heard through the event. Pierre rescues a princess, a costumed Jacques, from a dragon, played by Glout. Researchers note several moments when SCP-6373 instance has difficulty maintaining posture and moving, often taking multiple attempts to lift limbs. These movements increase in frequency over time. Performance Summary, 1895-04-17 Pierre and the other puppets take the roles of criminals recovering after a botched bank robbery attempt. As they attempt to figure out who alerted the police to their activities, they come to the conclusion that, was, that it was Ame. The puppet spent the rest of the performance using the spherical Ame as a ball in a game of soccer. It eventually devolves into a contest to see which puppet can kick Ame the hardest. Pierre berates Ame for betraying its trust and breaking the bond they had shared after years of working together. Examination of liquid secret Examination of liquid secreted by a May puppet indicates chemical similarity to human tears. Performance Summary 1916-02-29 The puppets reenact the scene on a farm while the German-Russian conflict known as the Battle of Tannenberg is waged nearby. 
Glauten and Jacques take the role of German and Russian soldiers, respectively, and act out the slapstick battle in a field. Sounds of war and human suffering are heard throughout. The subsequent scene inside the farmhouse features Pierre and Amé as husband and wife. Pierre laments that its crops have been destroyed due to the war, and calls Amé for support. The puppet remains silent, even as Pierre's cries grow louder and more frantic, as it shifts the blame of the crop destruction from the war to Amé itself. Pierre states that Amé will never be let out again, presumably referring to the house. Performance Summary 1922-08-21 SCP-6373 performs a similar narrative to the first recorded SCP-6373 event. Audiences note each puppet sounds discontented in its delivery of dialogue. Movements do not sync up with the dialogue and the instances move at frantic bursts. Hanging limbs when not speaking and ending when Pierre escapes with Jacques, while Glauton flees, is altered. <laughs> Wait. Those while not speaking. The ending where Pierre escapes with Jacques while Glauton flees is altered. Instead, Pierre directly attacks Glauton with a plastic sword while berating the puppet for being useless. Glauton acts if it were dead, and Pierre comments on its acting, stating that stating that isn't what being dead feels like. Future SCP-6 through 73 events are notably more dissonant and aggressive in tone. Performance Summary, 1938-11-04 First direct audience acknowledgement by, by SCP-6373. Puppets engage in comedic sketch involving dancing. Instances move in a slow, jerking motion while dialogue is quickly paced. Pierre becomes frustrated that the other puppets are unable to synchronize themselves and suspects that they are intentionally being uncooperative. Pierre banishes a prop ho- Pierre brandishes a prop hose and sprays water at the puppets. This removes the paint from their bodies. High-pitched feminine screams are heard throughout the theater with no discernible point of origin. Pierre turns to the audience and states, It's always been the same kids out there. Performance ends with Pierre hurling Amé into the crowd after it attempted to roll off stage. From this point on, Pierre speaks to the audience while performing, usually to seek approval before berating another puppet. All paint was restored by the next event. Future performances frequently feature Pierre accusing other puppets of malfeasance and taking physical action as a result. Performance Summary 1952-01-11 Pierre performs a piano duet with Jacques, who is unable to be quiet or still. Though Jacques apologizes, Pierre repeatedly slams the puppet's head into the piano, denting it. When Pierre is finished, viewers know Jacques' jaw has detached completely. Jacques' laughter turns into pained cries as the puppet takes damage. Within minutes, <clears throat> within minutes, vicious, viscous yellow fluid begins to seep from Jacques as it falls, as it fails to reattach its jaw. Audiences describe the liquid's odor as repugnant. Pierre receives Amé. <clears throat> Pierre retrieves Amé and forces the puppet to sit in the puddle of the fluid. This event marks the beginning of a trend towards increasingly violent behavior. While puppets sustain heavy damage as a result, the beginning, they begin each performance fully restored. Notably, Jacques' jaw is never fixed, and the fluid continues to seep from the puppet. Performance Summary 1963-08-21 Pierre takes the stage and berates the audience for attending. Pierre asks the audience if it is aware that in death, quote, a soul can still wither, unquote. Pierre's voice changes to that of a woman's and delivers a eulogy in memory of Timothy Gofford. Later investigation reveals that a funeral was not held for Gofford. Performance Summary, 1966... <laughs> Performance Summary, 1976-07-02. SCP-6373 does not take the stage. Instead, the event is projected onto the stage curtain by shadows. Their source is unknown. All puppets take part in insulting Amé, claiming that it is responsible for their current situation, and is the sole reason they are unable to, quote, move forward, unquote. 
Pierre pries Ame's eyes open with a pair of pliers. Jacques spews fluid into Ame, causing the puppet to scream. Pierre focus forces Glouton to consume and regurgitates Ame. Ame is beaten with shovels, drilled holes into with power tools, and squeezed by a vice to the point of breaking entirely. The event lasted four hours uninterrupted. During this process, the Pierre puppet emerges from behind the curtain and attempts an ordinary performance of Jack and the Beanstalk, while the shadows of Jacques and Glouton continue to beat Ame. All researchers' attempts to open Ame's puppet's eyelids have failed. Performance Summary 1979-09-18 SCP-6373 performs a retelling of Hansel and Gretel. All instances deteriorate considerably, <clears throat> considerably, seemingly without reason. Puppets have mobility issues throughout, sometimes repeating action several times or falling to the ground. The performance is entirely silent until the final scene when Pierre and Jacques toss a, con a costumed glouton into a mock oven. As the puppet, uh, as the puppet burns, it states that it quote cannot stay together anymore. Unquote. All puppets collapse. Observation of the Gofford Theater later reveals that the structural integrity of the building is in jeopardy due to previously undiscovered infestations of termites and wood decaying fungi in key construction areas. Performance Summary 1983 08 02 SCP 6373 instances hold a mock funeral for Ame and spend the rest of their performance exploring various afterlights that the puppet may be delivered to, complete with props and costumes. Puppets are notably culturally insensitive when it comes to discussing non-Western afterlifes. Event concludes with Jacques commenting on the excess of punitive afterlifes, and that it's impossible to truly know which a person should, should believe in to achieve salvation. Pierre then states that, quote, It knows the answer. We're all dead. This is the only afterlife there is." Unquote. Puppets then go limp and remain in this state for a week, missing seven performances. All future performances lack props and costumes, marking a decline in performance effort by SCP-6373. Performance Summary 18... Hmm. Performance Summary 1984-09-18 Last performance with discernible dialogue. Event is composed entirely of Pierre stating the full name, birth, and expiration date of every patron of the Gofford Theatre from its opening to the present. Members of the audience are included in this routine. Throughout the act, Pierre's movements are awkward, and its speech slow and slurred. Even concludes with Pierre looking to the ceiling stating, quote, You carry on so well, quote, before violently throwing itself across the stage multiple times. Performance Summary 1985-02-12 Performances have degraded to frenzies of self-harm carried out by each puppet. Stage lighting is absent or flickers. Musical accompaniment is distorted and cacophonous. Instances will self-mutilate, flagellate, and flay themselves throughout the use of the stage's floor friction. Each, each other... <clears throat> Through the use of the stage's floor friction, each other, or blood force trauma. Screams range from high-pitched feminine voices to deep male ones. Occasional laughter is heard during male screams. Performance Summary, 1985-04-25. All puppets sit on the stage motionless, occasionally turning their heads to monologue to the audience in a nonsensical, indecipherable fashion. Several researchers claim the puppets were directly gazing at them. All future dialogue and performances consist solely of moaning, grunting, screaming, and weeping, with extended periods of inactivity. Physical actions are often limited to standing or sitting. Performance Summary 1985-06-09 Final Performance SCP-6373 instances stand side by side for 18 minutes. No dialogue is heard. They collectively bow and fall to the ground. Stage lights and music cease. No further events occur. See addenda for details. Following the 1985-06-09 performance, all SCP-6373 instances began the deterioration process observed prior, 
shedding their paper mache exteriors. When this was complete, in each instance was discovered to contain a preserved human remains and organs, which have been segmented cleanly at several termination points. All remains are presumably sourced from a single individual. Their contents have been listed below. Pierre contained a brain. Jacques contained a heart. <clears throat> Glauton contained a conglomerate mass of excess organs, an unbroken layer of epidermal skin tissue, fecal matter, and hair. Ame was empty. Examination of unfolded skin tissue found within Glout revealed resemblance to person of interest 6373-2, Cynthia Cordier. Object has been reclassified as neutralized. Well, that was the end of today's lecture. I hope you pulled something out of it, and I hope you're glad to hell that we don't have to deal with this thing anymore. I'll see you all in the next class. For now, you're all dismissed. Go have yourself a nice day.